If you have your Bibles, can you get them out so we can take a look together what the Bible has to say? Today I'd like to talk about the kingdom. And if you have your Bibles, let's turn over to Matthew chapter 3, and we're starting in verse 1. So Matthew is your first book in your New Testament, and we're going to chapter 3, and we're going to look at verse 1. And in verse 1 it says, In those days John the Baptist came preaching in the wilderness of Judea, and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Here is the beginning of John the Baptist's ministry, and he's telling people to repent. And the reason why was that the kingdom of heaven was at hand. That means it was getting close to them. And let's go over to chapter 4, verse 17. So Matthew chapter 4, verse 17, it says, From that time Jesus began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Here Jesus is saying the same message as John the Baptist, that the people should repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And once again, he's speaking to those that are the Jews, the Israelites. And now we're going to chapter 10, verse 1. So if you have your Bible, turn to Matthew chapter 10, and we're going to verse 1. And it says, And when he had called his twelve disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. And then if you look at verses 2, 3, and 4, it lists the twelve names of the twelve disciples. And then in verse 5 it says, These twelve Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now notice this. This message was not for anyone except for the Israelites. This message was only for Israel. It was not for the Gentiles, not for the Samaritans, but only to the Israelites. And look at verse 7. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Notice that this message was for the Israelites. It's not for the Gentiles. It's not for the Samaritans. The kingdom of heaven was a message for the Jewish people. And if they would have accepted it, the kingdom of heaven was going to be implemented at that time. That means that Jesus would have been their king, and they would have had a nation on earth that would have been the greatest nation of all nations on earth. And if they rejected Jesus, then the kingdom would not be able to be set up at that time. And Jesus is offering the Jewish people the kingdom of heaven at that time. And he was telling them that it's close. And we're going to see a little bit more about it. But notice that it was not a message to anyone but the Israelites. And that So this is not the same message as we tell people now about how to receive everlasting life. That message is for all people, and it always has been for all people. But the message of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God was specifically for the Jewish people at this time. And if they would have accepted Jesus, he would have been their king. And we're going to learn more about that in this Bible study. So we can see that they talk about it, and you can read chapter 10 on your own. But let's turn over to Luke. Luke is the third gospel book, so you got Matthew, Mark, and then Luke, and we're going to Luke chapter 10, and we'll start in verse 1 in Luke chapter 10. And it says, After these things the Lord appointed seventy others also, and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. So notice here in chapter 10 of Luke that he sends 70, 70 others, and he sent them two by two. In Matthew chapter 10, he sent the 12 disciples out. So this is two different things, but they're very similar. If you read uh, Luke chapter 10 and Matthew chapter 10 and compare, they're very similar. But one, he sends out the 12 disciples, and Luke here, he sends out the 70. And if you go down to, let's say, verse 8, it says, Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come near to you. But whatever city you enter and they do not receive you, go out into the streets and say, The very dust of your city which clings to us we wipe off against you. Nevertheless, know this, that the kingdom of God has come near you. Now notice that once again that they're offering the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven to the Jewish people. And if they rejected it, that they, you know, look at verse 12. It says, But I say to you that it will be more tolerable in the day of Sodom than for that city. So for those that rejected the kingdom of, of God's message, that they were going to be judged quite harshly. And that, that'll be a shame. But let's go over to John chapter 18. We're going to see in John chapter 18, Jesus himself was that king. He was going to be the king of the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God if the Jewish people would receive that message. So let's go over to John chapter 18, and we will look at verse 37. 
John chapter 18, verse 37 says, Pilate therefore said to him, Are you a king then? Jesus answered, You say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. And then it goes on, but you can see that Jesus answered that he was a king. And if you go back to verse 36, it says, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight, so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. Now notice in verse 36, this is a little bit different than what he was saying in Matthew chapter 3 and chapter 4, what John the Baptist was saying in Matthew chapter 3. And Jesus said in Matthew chapter 4 verse 17, because they were saying the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God was at hand. It was close to to them. But here Jesus is saying, my kingdom is not of this world. And the reason why is right here, if you notice, if you read John chapter 18, Jesus is being put on trial and about to be crucified. We're going to see that in the next chapter, in chapter 19, that Jesus is going to be crucified. So he's on trial here. They have already rejected him as king. They said that they have no king but, but uh, Caesar. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. But they had rejected Jesus as king. They didn't accept the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of God message. They rejected that. And therefore, Jesus is saying, my kingdom is not of this world. It was. It would have been of this world if the Jewish people had accepted Jesus at this time, at his first coming, about 2,000 years ago. But they rejected that message and, it, and the, something else happened. And we're going to take a look at that. So we're going to go over to chapter 19. And it's going to say, and let's go to verse 7. Well, actually, let's back up to verse 6. Therefore, when the chief priests and officers saw him, they cried out, saying, Crucify him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, You take him and crucify him, for I find no fault in him. Notice here that Pilate could not find anything wrong with Jesus. He was sinless. He was the perfect person. He was, he was God himself in flesh. So he was perfect. In verse 7, the Jews answered him, We have a law, and according to our law, he ought to die, because he made himself the Son of God. Therefore, when Pilate heard that, saying he was more, the more afraid, and he went again into the praetorium and said to Jesus, Who, Where are you from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said to him, Are you not speaking to me? Do you not know that I have power to crucify you and power to release you? Jesus answered, You could have no power at all unless me, against me uh, unless it had been given to you from above. Therefore, the one who delivered me to you has the greater sin. From then on, Pilate sought to release him, but the Jews cried out, saying, If you let this man go, you are not Caesar's friend. Whoever makes himself a king speaks against Caesar. When Pilate therefore heard that saying, he brought Jesus out and sat down in the judgment seat in a place that is called the pavement, but in Hebrew, Gabbatha. Now it was the preparation day of the Passover and about the sixth hour. And he said to the Jews, Behold, your king. So here Pilate's recognizing Jesus was their king. But notice in verse 15, But they cried out, Away with him, away with him, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? The chief priest answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he delivered him to them to be crucified when they took Jesus and led him away. Notice that the, the chief priests answered, we have no king but Caesar. They rejected Jesus as their king and looked to the Roman king, which is, which is crazy, but they did. They rejected Jesus as king. And notice in verse 17, it says, And he, bearing his cross, went out to a place called the place of a school, which is called in Hebrew Golgotha, where they crucified him and two others with him, one on either side and Jesus in the center. Now Pilate wrote a title and put it on the cross, and the writing was, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Notice here that Pilate, maybe he did it just to be mean to the Jews, or maybe he did it because he really thought that Jesus was the King of the Jews. But whatever the reason is, he put a plaque above the cross, a sign on the cross that said that Jesus was the King of the Jews. And he is the King of the Jews, and one day he's going to be King of all of us. But they rejected him at that time. But So that means that this king, the kingdom is not here yet. We're not in the kingdom of God. We're not in the kingdom of heaven right now. When the kingdom happens, a lot of things will take place that will change this world. And I want to take a look at a few of those things just to give you an example. One of the things that will happen is that a new temple will be built. And let's turn our Bibles over to Ezekiel. And we're going to Ezekiel chapter 40 verse 1. Ezekiel's in the Old Testament towards the back half 
of the Old Testament, but we're going to chapter 40, verse 1. It says, In the 25th year of our captivity at the beginning of the year, on the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year, after the city was captured, on the very same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he took me there. We're going to go to verse 4. And the man said to me, Son of man, look with your eyes and hear with your ears, and fix your mind on everything I show you. For you were brought here so that I might show them to you. Declare to the house of Israel everything you see. Now there was a wall all around the outside of the temple, and the man's hand was a measuring rod six cubits long, each being a cubit and a handbreadth. And he measured the width of the wall structure, one rod, and the height, one rod. And if you read chapter 40, and you could go all the way to chapter 48 to the end of Ezekiel, it talks about this temple that's going to happen when Jesus is king. And that's going to happen during what's called the millennium. But this temple is not existing yet, and it never has existed in the past. And you can read about the measurements and what kind of what the temple's like and what's going to happen in the temple. But that's one of the features when Jesus is king, that this temple will exist. And one more thing I want to take a look at is that the animal world will be totally different at that time. When Jesus is king and the kingdom of God is set up here on earth, the kingdom of heaven is set up on earth, we're going to take a look at Isaiah chapter 11. Isaiah is a few books before Ezekiel, but in chapter 11, starting in verse 6, let's notice this. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the young goat, and the, the calf and the young lion and the fa- fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play by the cobra's hole, and the weaned child shall put his hand in the viper's den. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord, as the waters cover the sea. And we're going to stop there because it says that the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the water covers the sea. That's not true yet. And notice in verse 6, the wolf shall lay down, shall dwell with the lamb. That doesn't happen now. If you go to the zoo, they have to separate the animals because if not, the wolf is going to eat the lamb. But this is obviously not the kingdom that we're in right now. The kingdom will happen and when it happens, these things will be true but it isn't here yet. But we can look forward to that the day will come where these conditions will exist, Jesus will be king, and will it'll be a great time. So I hope you're ready for that time, and if you have not believed in Jesus as your savior yet, that's the only way to enter the kingdom. You must be born again. In fact, if you go over to John chapter three, let's just turn there for the last verse. John chapter three, starting in verse three. Let's take a look at what it says here. It says, Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And then look at verse 5 also. It says, Jesus answered, Most assuredly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. And then in verse 7, it says, Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. And if you read the whole chapter, the message is that you need to believe in Jesus as Savior, and then you're born again. In fact, let's go to, well, let's just go over to John chapter 1, verse 12, because it tells you how you can become a child of God, which means you're born again. It says in John chapter 1, verse 12, it says, But as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, to those who believe in his name. So if you believe in the name of Jesus, you have the right to become a child of God. That means you have been born again. Well, I hope you enjoyed this Bible study, and I hope you tell your friends and family about it. And join me for my other Bible studies. I look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you.